to be a man of God. Because you are doing the you are doing the will of God. But Satan, he the opposer, he the accuser. He is attacking you day and night. So that you should give, give up. So that you should lose your faith in God. And go back to the world. So brother and sister, I want us to open our lips. Let us pray for our dear pastor. Send your prayer to him. Pray. Pray that whatsoever that he is going through, that the Almighty God may hear him. That the Almighty God may bring restoration to his soul. That no weapon that is fashioned against his soul shall prosper. That no evil attack that is stand upon his soul shall prosper. But the word of God will fulfill in his life in Jesus' name. Lord, merciful and you, Father. Lord, we pray for your dear servant, Pastor Peter Ungor, oh Lord. We pray for him, oh Lord. For what's so that he is going to Father Lord. Lord, we pray for divine healing upon his soul, oh Father Lord. We come again every evil attack upon his life. We pray, Father, that no weapon that is fashioned against his life shall prosper. He the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, we give you praise, oh Lord. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will remember his work. You will remember everything that he has done for your kingdom, oh Lord. You will remember everything, Father Lord, that he has done for your name's sake. He the mighty name of Jesus. You will remember, Father Lord, for what he has done for the orphans, for the widows, oh Father Lord, for the homeless, for the needy. He the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I pray the mighty name of Jesus that all that he has done for you, Father Lord, it will not go in vain, oh Lord. I pray that you will remember his work. That you will remember everything that he has done for your kingdom. Everything that you have that he has done for your kingdom. For your name's sake, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. We pray, oh Lord. We pray for divine healing upon this life. We pray for divine restoration upon this life. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord. We come against everything, oh Lord. Every evil habit that is shot against this life. He sent us back in the center. In the mighty name of Jesus. No problem with the fashion against this life. Because you said in the word that wheresoever two or three are gathered in your name, you are there with the Father Lord. Therefore, we invite your divine presence among us to come and do your divine will among us. Father Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that who was whosoever that is sick among us, as the word is preached, may they receive it by faith and may they get that divine healing, Father Lord. I pray that whosoever that is worried among us, O oh Lord, as the word is preached, O oh Lord, I pray that they will receive it by faith, O oh Lord, so that anxiety can get out of their life, O oh Lord. Whosoever that is oppressing in this place, Father Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, as the word is preached, O oh Father Lord, I pray that they will receive it by faith, O oh Lord, so that it can get out of their life in the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. Father Amen. Lord. You are respected of no person, O oh Lord, but I know that you have chosen me today to preach your word, to deliver your word, and to preach your word only, Father Lord. Lord, as the servant Jeremiah said, Oh Lord, I'm only a child, Father Lord. I say the same thing, Father Lord. I'm only a very human. I'm only a child, Father Lord. But a Father, I know you have the power. I know you are capable of doing anything, Oh Lord. Therefore, as I have come here to preach, Father Lord, I pray that you will equip me with every spiritual necessity, O oh Lord, to preach a word unto your people with understanding, with wisdom and with knowledge, Father Lord, use me as a vessel 
to preach the word of Father Lord. Lord, I pray that you will guide me in all my ways, O Lord. Holy Spirit, come and take complete control. Come and have your way, O Lord. Father Lord, and at the end, we will ascribe all the glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I welcome you all once again. I hope that you will open your heart to receive. Don't look at me physically, because if you look at me physically, you will be discouraged. <laughs> I'm just a man. Yeah. Look at me in the spirit. Yeah. We should look at one another in the spirit, because we all have greatness in us. That's why Jesus said, what I can do, you can also do it, but even greater. Yeah. So brother and sister, I encourage you all to look at one another in the spirit. Because if we look at one another physically, we all have faults. Mm -hmm. We all have faults. But we should always grace one another in the spirit. Because we are children of God and our Heavenly Father, He is a spiritual being. We don't see Him, but we still believe Him. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, as I said in the beginning, the title of our message today is Faith in the Word of God and the benefit. We have been talking about faith, faith, faith. So today we are also going to talk about the benefit of having faith. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. But before we go to our main subject, because in this church we deal with purpose, mm -hmm. reason. Like we need purpose. If there is purpose, there will be no abuse. Mm -hmm. If you know what a woman is for and you are married to her, you will not abuse her. Mm -hmm. You will respect her. Mm -hmm. You will cherish her. Mm -hmm. Because that woman was given to you by God. Amen. So we should always know the purpose of what we have something for. In that case, there will be no abuse. But when we don't know the purpose, we don't know the reason, there will be abuse day and night. Mm -hmm. But as children of God, we have to be wise as our Father is wise. Therefore, we need to know the purpose of everything that we can, that we are doing. Because purpose gives meaning. And when you have meaning of what you are doing, you know, it motivates you. Nobody needs to come and say, oh, go and do that. You know the reason what you are doing it for. So it motivates you day and night. To do what you are doing. Amen. So, brother and sister, I want you to go with me to the book of. Now we're going to define what faith is. Let us go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1. The Bible says in Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is confidence. In what we hope for, an assurance about what we do not see. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, faith is confidence in what we hope for, and an assurance about what we do not see. Hallelujah. Amen. So, in this scripture, we have to distinguish because more Christians they they kind of mix faith with hope, but we have to know that faith. It is something that is of the heart. But hope is a mental action. Hope, it is something that is of the future. Like you are hoping to go to work tomorrow. You are hoping to do your daily activity tomorrow. So it is something we are talking about in the future. But when we, when we talk about faith, <coughs> faith, it is something we are talking about now. Mm -hmm. Now. When you are sick, you don't say, I hope to get healed. You pray to God and you believe it. You say, I'm healed. By the strap of Jesus, I'm healed. Amen. Don't say, by the strap of Jesus, I will be healed. Yeah. It is now we are talking about now. But you have to be aware of that you will not see the sign physically. You might be saved and the symptom is there. 
you are feeling the pain, but you have to believe it because this is what the Word of God says. You have to believe it even though the symptom is stay there and it's still paining you. You have to believe it. You know, we as you know, the problem with us is that sometimes when we are going through things or we are praying to God for something, we want it instantly. But you know, the God we serve, He is not a magician. He is not a magician. It, it, doesn't believe, it, it doesn't mean that because you believe in God, you have faith in God, that whenever you stand in prayer, you say, oh God, I need this, I need that. God will say, okay, my son, you have it. No, no, no. You know? Some, in some cases, God will give you it if it is in line of His Word. Yeah. Because everything, when we, are in, when we are standing in prayer or when we are asking God for something, it has to be in line with the Word of God. If it is out of it, then you are playing with yourself. Right? You are joking. You are joking. You are just you know, praying empty words. But as long as it is in the line of the Word of God, it, is not, it doesn't necessarily mean that when you pray that it will come to you immediately. Sometimes God wants to test your faith. Because we know first of all that God is faithful. And God always watches over His Word to perform them. God is all about His Word. You see? But sometimes God will make you to go through some things. He will test you. God wants to know where you are standing with Him. If you just want to get something from Him, if you just want to use Him and get something from Him, and then afterward you vanish, or you really mean what you are saying. See? So God is not like man. First of all, before you and I stand in prayer, asking God for something, believing God for something, God already knows your heart. He knows your heart. Just as Jesus said, I know the heart of man. So he didn't, he didn't argue with men. Because he knows your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. So brothers and sisters, now we're going to we have define what faith is. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do. Hallelujah. Amen. So in other case, faith is something that is now. It's an assurance. You might not see it, but it is there spiritually. It is there spiritually. It is in the spirit. It's just a matter of time before it can manifest. Mm. Yeah. And before sometimes it manifests, your Heavenly Father will, will you know, will let you pain a bit. You know, you know, like sometimes like, like a young baby, you know. You know? As women, we are very tricky. As a mother, you know what your child needs, especially when you are that, you are just being born. Your mother knows what you need to survive. But sometimes it comes to a point that you know your child that when that baby starts to cry, you will then immediately give them the bottle. You will wait some time. You know? If they really if they are really crying for true or it is just some crocodile tears. <laughs> you know? Before you can fulfill their need. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray I'm making some sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So now, we are going to go on our topic, faith in the word of God and the benefit. As I said in the beginning, we have been preaching about faith, faith, faith. But what is the benefit of having faith in God? Like, it's like asking yourself, what is the benefit of me going to work? Am I just going to work because I want to go to work or if there is, there is any benefit in going to work? We know that going to work at the end of the month, we're going to get paid so we can pay our bills. It encourages us to always be, it is not always motivating to go to work because sometimes you have people at your working place, you know, that are so discouraging, you know, that are wearing you out, that are negative in every area. But you know, if you don't go to that work, and the month ends, 
You don't pay your husband. You don't pay your current bill. You know the landlord will probably keep you out. <laughs> or in case they're going to come after you. <laughs> so we need to know, first of all, we need to know the reason. We need to know the reason. So when we know the reason and the purpose, it motivates us to continue having faith in God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even when things are not good, just as the Bible said, we should pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. Which means we should always be in an attitude of prayer. Mm -hmm. Don't just pray because things are bad with you. Mm -hmm. as, as a child of God, your Father wants for you to be in contact with Him day and night. He wants for you to be in relationship with Him every day. Not only when things are not bad, you run to Him. Oh, Daddy, Daddy, you know, I'm in need of some help. No, 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 no. That is not the kind of children God wants. Just like the, the, the children of Israel, they were very stubborn. And God didn't like them. God didn't like their attitude towards Him. So He made sure that they didn't get to the Promised Land. He made sure that their offspring got to the Promised Land. But since they were murmuring everything God did for them, they were not appreciative of what God did for them. So God said, You people have given me help. And I know when I carry you guys to the Promised Land, nothing will change. So it is better for me to bury you guys here. So your offspring can go to the promised land and benefit the promised land. Hallelujah. Amen. So brothers and sisters, we, we go. Now we, we go to the we go to the book of now we are talking about the benefits of having faith in the word of God. So I want us to go to the, the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. Let us go to the book of Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. The book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. It says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself, it is the gift of God. Hallelujah. Amen. It is by grace you have been saved through faith. You know, the grace of God is unmerited favor. It's something that you and I don't deserve. But, but, but because of the love that the Almighty God has for us, He impacted this on us through faith. So you and I by, are saved by the unmerited favor of God and by the faith of the unfinished work of, of the finished work of Christ on the cross of Calvary. So what faith brings? Faith brings salvation. By you and I having faith in the word of God, it brings salvation. Whosoever believes in him has eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. John 3:16. And shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. John 5, 24. The judge shall live by faith. Mm. Romans 1, 17. <coughs> we as believers, we as children of God, we are not made righteous because we are good. Christ said, none is good. None is good. So, you and I will not be made righteous because we do good things, we do good deeds. But you and I will be made righteous because of the finished work of Christ on the cross of Calvary. Amen. So, so, your, you want, so our faith in the finished work of Christ on the cross of Calvary the gifts of salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want us I want us to go to 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 7. 1 Peter 1 7.
First Peter one seven. First Peter one seven says, "These have come so that the the proving genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor." When Jesus Christ is revealed. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible teaches us that genuine faith is more precious than gold that perishes. Indeed, our faith, such faith is going to be tested. Do you know what our faith is going to be tested for? It's going to be tested for if it is genuine, if it is real. If it is real or if it is just something that is fake. If you are just believing God so God can do you something and then afterward maybe you pray, oh Almighty God, I'm believing in you for a, for a precious wife, for a virtuous wife, and then the Almighty God bless you. With that wonderful thing. Thing. <laughs> and then afterward, you escape from the presence of God. You see? Now that is, that, is, that is the kind of Christians most of us are. We come to church believing God for something. We get attached to our pastor. Oh, pastor, I'm going through things. Pastor, I really need you to help me. I need you to pray for me, oh Lord. I, I, I cannot do this with my own father. I need God. I need the presence of God. I need the divine power of God in my life to change my, my situation. Pastor, I'm praying God in my world. There's nothing that's going well. Everyone is overlooking me. I want a higher position. And then God bless you. Believing in God. And then the Almighty God bless you with this. And then... For you even coming to church and say, Oh, Father, Lord, thank you. I want to thank you, Father. I want to thank your servant. I want to thank you, Father, for making this possible. I want to thank you for opening, making way in my life yeah. when it seems impossible. No, <coughs> you are nowhere to be seen. <laughs> and people are, you are nowhere to be seen. And people are even saying that you are in speed. But when you tell you are nowhere to be found in Spain, yeah. you are probably in some of those basement enjoying your blessing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but forgetting that it is just a matter of time be before what God bless you with, it will be consumed. Yeah. And then you will come crying again. Then God said, I know you, my son. I know your heart. I know your heart. That your faith is not real. It's fake. It's fake just as you are fake. So this time, I'm going to put you to the test. If you really believe in me, if you really believe in my word, because the Bible says that God and his word, they are one. The Bible even says that God Put his word above his name. Mm. So you see that? You see how precious the word of God is? When God himself put his word above his name, you should know that this book called the Bible, it should be a book that we should not take for granted. Because this book, it has the power to take you from grass to grace. Amen. It has the power to take you from hell to heaven. Yeah. So brothers and sisters, when we are sometimes when we are going through things, we neglect, we say we are children of God. But we neglect the word of God. We meditate more on our problems. We worry too much. Forgetting Forgetting that the Bible says that we should meditate on the word day and night. 
There is wisdom in the word of God. So brothers and sisters, I want to admonish you and I that we should never neglect this book. Because when you are going through things, what do you need? It's the word. Mm -hmm. What do you go to a uh, psychiatry for? <laughs> what, he, what is he going to give you? Is, is he going to do some miracle for you? No. <coughs> he is going to speak a word to you. So what about the word of God which is free? Free. Go in the word of God and read what the word of God says. And, and believe it. Genuinely. Not just because you are going through something now, say, oh God, I believe you will do this. And then when everything is over, you put it down. You forgot to know that it was God. It was God that made it possible for you to be sound-minded. It was God that made it possible for you to be healed. It was God that made it possible that when you were in darkness, He was the one that made it possible so that you can receive the light. Amen. And through that, you've been saved. So brothers and sisters, we should never neglect God, word, God and His word, they are one. And God has put His word above His name. So it just shows how marvelous, how magnificent, how precious, and how powerful, how divine the word of God is. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want us to go to the book of John 3.16. John 3, 16. John 3, 16. I'll read from the book of John 3, 16. <coughs> it says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. For God so loved the world, and He gives us one and only Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother. This scripture is so precious. You see the love that the Almighty God has for you and I. Imagine a mother sacrificing her one and only son just for you. Imagine that God could sacrifice his beloved son, Christ Jesus, for our sake, for something, for our wrongdoing, for something that we neglected, so that we could be so that we could be saved. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Doesn't that, shouldn't that encourage you and I to have faith in God, in His Word, and to reap that benefit of salvation, to be free from every power of darkness, to have light day and night when other people are going astray, you are on the right path of life when other people are struggling. You are just moving, moving. When other people have it bad, you are having it good because of the Almighty God, His Word. So faith in the Word of God, these are one of the benefits, salvation. Christ came to bring salvation unto us. Because we were dead. When our ancestor Adam and Eve, they sinned against God. They were thrown out of the presence of God. They were disconnected. They were living physically, they were living. But spiritually, they were dead. They were disconnected from God. They were disconnected from everything 
that had to do with God. Because they failed to obey God. They failed to obey what God says in His Word. God said, do not, you can eat of any other tree. But this particular tree, do not eat of it. And they knew they were interacting with God day and night in the presence of God. Benefiting God. When in all of that, everything, the Almighty, everything the Heavenly Father did for them, they still went on and disobeyed His word. And God said it. If you disobey me, you have to get out of my presence. I will disconnect you from me. You will have no more access to me. And you will be on your own. And from then, you will labor, 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 and continue labor. And you, the woman, when you are giving birth, you will be in pain. You see? How it is to disobey the word of God. So, if you disobey the word of God, in other words, there will be no, your benefit will be a great punishment. But, if you have faith, now let me make, let me, let me make this clear. If you have faith, the faith that I'm talking here is taking appropriate action towards the world. Taking appropriate action. Believing God, for instance, when you are sick, you say, by the strap of Jesus, I'm healed. You believe God. But you have to continue confessing it. Confessing it. Oh Lord, by the strap, I'm healed. I believe you. I believe what your word says. I believe you. I know I'm healed. Even though I still see the symptoms, even though I'm still paining, but I know I'm here because I know that you cannot lie. You are not a man to lie, Lord. I know I'm here by your strength. Amen. Believe in the word, having faith in God because you cannot separate God and his word in Jesus' name. Amen. And then also, faith brings answer to prayer. The Bible says that whatever you ask in prayer, Really believing, mm -hmm. you will receive. Yeah. Matthew 21, chapter 21, verse 22. Faith brings answer to prayer. And whatever things you ask in prayer, really believing, you will receive. So you have to, you have to believe God in His Word. And mm. the, the benefit will be that your prayer will be answered. In terms of health, maybe you are sick. Say, oh God, I'm sick. I'm praying unto you, oh Lord, to heal me. I'm praying unto you to heal me so I can go out there and preach your word so I can be able to save soul for your kingdom's sake. Mm -hmm. This is in the line of, of God's word. Mm -hmm. The Almighty God will be willing to heal you. He will be willing to answer your prayer. But you have to believe in Genuine faith, not fake faith, not just like you want God to heal you, you know, so you can go on your own and do whatever you want to do. You have to believe God. Believe God in His Word. And He will make your prayer to come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Then let us go to the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 11. Matthew 6, 11. Give us today our daily bread. Hallelujah. Amen. Give us today our daily bread. So when we also stand in prayer, Amen. we are lacking food. Because the Almighty God encouraged, He also encourages us to pray for our daily bread. 
So, therefore, faith is therefore a key to our material provision. Amen. Believe in God, not worry, but believe in God and His Word. That Almighty oh, God, Lord, I pray unto you. I don't know what tomorrow will be. I don't know what I will become of tomorrow, Father. I don't know tomorrow where my daily bread will come from, but I'm believing you, Father, that you're going to put food on my table. Amen. And that doesn't mean tomorrow, when tomorrow comes, you just turn on your television and sit down. No, 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 no. No. You have prayed to God. So, what you need to do now is to go out there, take appropriate action. Take appropriate action. As you have prayed to God, go out there and work to get food. Or make garden to get food. But don't just pray and say, oh, okay. If you make it that way, you pray, believing God in His Word, that tomorrow, because the Bible says we shouldn't labor for anything. But believing God in His Word, having faith in God, and we take appropriate action towards what we are believing God for, the Almighty God will make it to come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then also, let us go to the book of First Peter. I mean, for, um, First Peter. Chapter 1, verse 8. It says in First Peter chapter 1, verse 8. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him. And are filled with an expression and glorious joy. Hallelujah. Amen. Faith brings all the benefits of salvation into our life. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, brothers and sisters, you and I, we have not seen God. Have we? We don't know how to see God physically. But we know that God that we serve Him is a spirit being. So therefore, we believe. So therefore, we live by faith because the currency of the kingdom is faith. Everything we do, we have to be by faith. You and I, we have not seen God physically. God has not come to us physically and said, Oh, my son, I'm God, the Heavenly Father. We have not experienced that. But we know that spiritually that God exists. He is and He is now. God is not, he is not the past. God is today. We know that God is here with us in this place. So faith brings all the benefit of salvation into our lives. This includes healing, prosperity, If you, if you go to the book of Ephesians 2, you go to the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse um, 2, verse 8 to 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself, it is the gift of God. Amen. So faith brings all the benefit of salvation into our lives. This includes healing, prosperity, peace, love, joy. First Peter, First Peter 1, 8. Deliverance from demons and curse. Sanctification of the mind and emotion. The salvation of the soul and any other benefits which the word of God promises us. Faith is a spiritual force to which our ministry for Christ becomes effective. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us go to the book of Mark. Mark 11, 23. Let 
Mark 11, 22, he says, Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in your heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Hallelujah. So, this is Jesus himself that is telling us this. God himself, God manifested in the flesh, telling us this. If anyone says to this mountain, go through yourself. So let me make one thing clear. This mountain, it is not the physical mountain that we see out there. Mm -hmm. This is, can be a mountain of duality, tribulation that is going on in our life, problem. It can be sickness, hindrance, barrier that is causing us, you know, not to enter our destiny, not to get the promises that God wants us to get, you know, obstacles, things that are not carrying us forward in life, things that are being a hindrance, you know, to our spiritual life. So these are the mountains that Christ Jesus is talking about. Amen. Throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in the heart. So when you stand in prayer, you don't, you don't have to doubt. Don't doubt. Because the moment you will not doubt, we will not, our prayer will not be answered. You see, the case of, of, of Jesus and Peter on the world, when the storm was going on, when the, when the storm was happening, the disciples were afraid. But then they saw Jesus Christ walking on the water. They were, then, Peter, then Jesus said to Peter, Come. Then, at first, Peter was coming, but then he looks at the problem. He looks at the wave. He started to doubt in his heart. He was not focusing on Christ, he was not having faith. In what Christ has said, come, my son. He should have just focused on what Jesus has said. Keep moving. But no, he was he was in there, he was acting on his senses. He was acting on his senses. He was looking at the problem. He was not looking at what he was not believing God for what God had told him. He said, My son, come, come. Jesus said, Come, believe him, believe in his word, believe what he has already said. And you will benefit it. And you will benefit it by making it to him, by not doubting in your heart. So faith, faith brings all the benefit of salvation into our life. Hallelujah. Amen. Faith is a spiritual force to which our ministry of Christ, for Christ becomes effective. Mm -hmm. Faith is a major key to ministry success. It brings to you what you need for your ministry. And by imparting it to others through your life and your ministry of God's word you enable them to receive the blessing of God's grace mentioned above hallelujah Amen. in particular faith is the major key for an effective healing and deliverance ministry Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today forever lives in the Christians hallelujah let us go to the book of Hebrews now we are about to conclude let us go to the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 Hebrews 13, 8. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today, forever. Hallelujah. Our Lord is here with us. He is the same yesterday. What He did for the prophets, what He did for the children of Israel, He can still do it for you and I. If we just believe in Him and His Word, we will reap the benefit. We will reap the benefit of salvation. We will reap the benefit of, of answer to our prayer. And we will reap the benefit of all spiritual blessing, brothers and sisters. So, have faith in God. Have faith in God. And always express your faith by taking appropriate action. Hallelujah. When you are in need of a job, you don't have job. You just don't pray. Just don't, don't just pray to God and then you sit at home. No, you gotta take appropriate action. 
you, you know, you gotta take the way that will make you to get that job. Mm -hmm. That is what we call taking appropriate action to the matter. You gotta take, and by you taking that appropriate action, God will say, oh, this my son has a genuine faith. Because now, he didn't really pray to me. But he, he, and he doesn't really believe in me. But he is taking appropriate action to go what he prayed to. Okay. In Jesus' name. Amen. So brother and sister, we should always express it by taking appropriate action. That is what we call faith. Faith, taking appropriate action. And when we take that appropriate action, believing God, in his word. Because God and his word, they are one. You cannot distinguish God from his word. God and his word are one. And God has exalted his word before his name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. I hope you really got something, brothers and sisters. And I really thank you guys for taking your time today. Taking your time today coming here, I pray that you got something that uh, enter into your heart that will bear fruit. And I hope you will not go home as you came. I hope that you have been, a, you have been blessed and you will go out there and share that blessing with your family, with your friends, with your brothers and sisters, with those that are lost, those that need to be saved. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, brother and sister, now we're going to take this time to give our offering. Hallelujah. Amen.